Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, this September the 27th, Friday. I continue to pray for the people of uh, Florida, uh, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, going through Hurricane Helene right now. Um, the most, there, there's right now, there's still a lot of danger with uh, high water, strong winds, falling trees, tornadoes. And then the hard part that I think, um, adrenaline gets you through the first couple of, you know, days. And then it's the long, okay, hurry up and wait for things to get back to quote unquote normal. Or you get to the point where you're looking for the new normal. Uh, and that's always hard. And uh, uh, we went through our Hurricane Burl here in Angleton. And um, they're still recovering. There's still people uh, just barely getting roofs on because of the amount of uh, work that needs to, needed to be done. And uh, we're still recovering. Uh, I expect uh, that a lot of the uh, uh, roof, it's going to be harder to get roofs done because roofing crews will now be moving towards Florida, Georgia, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina. Uh, I know if I was uh, a roofer and had mobility, that's where I would be. Uh, anyway. Pray for them. It's going to be uh, a recovery. So let us begin with our morning devotions by going to Steve Charleston in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And Stephen writes for us this morning, Knowing how volatile the issue of refugees and borders is today, I have been remembering Im an image of my elders gave me a gave me long ago. There are no pearly gates to heaven because there is no need for a gate at all. Spirit has no need of gates and walls. Eternal love alone encircles the holy community. In this age of boundaries and conflict, it is healing to remember the elder's vision, an open path to heaven for all who seek shelter. Amen. In God's community, there is no them. It's all us. We are all together. We move from uh, Oklahoma City to Albuquerque, New Mexico, by way of the internet, to the Center for Action and Contemplation, contemplating a contemplative consciousness. This morning's title is Set Apart and Within the World. Um, authors Adam Bucko and Rory McEntry. Okay, they're continuing from yesterday. What a new monasticism could mean today. My problem with, with you know, if you're going to be a monastic, there's a level of commitment that is taken um, if you're going to be a pastor, there's a level of commitment that is required. Uh, that level of commitment is changing, but there's still a commitment. And uh, sometimes that confuses people uh, because they don't want the commitment. Uh, monasticism, uh, I think, it, it's, is a, they're, they're transforming what what levels of commitment and that's my little editorial, even before I read it. So I apologize if I'm proven wrong. I accept it. But that's my bias going in as I read this. So I apologize ahead of time. Um, so the authors write, Monastic life then represents for us a complete commitment to a transformative journey, which takes us into the fullness of our humanity, allowing divinity to flower within us in increasing degrees of love and compassion, joy, sorrow, and wisdom. Monast the monastic is the one who devotes his or her life to this ideal and allows all life decisions to flow out of this commitment. The root uh, word of 
the root of the word monk is monakos, which means set up. Oh, this is for Thursday. Excuse me. I got directed to the wrong place. I sounded familiar. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see what read today's means. Excuse me. They don't have Mondays up. Somebody. That's for Wednesday. They don't have today's. Okay. Uh, well, then, well, you've heard my commentary. Now we're going to go to uh, Luther Seminary. We're jumping just because they don't have uh, what they were going to have ready. Um. So, uh, we begin with uh, at Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota, God Pause, uh, Mark chapter 9, verses 38 to 50. John said, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name. And we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able to soon afterwards speak evil of me. Whoever is not against me is for us. Is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It would be better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go and go to and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maim than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell. Where the worm, where their worm never dies. And the fire is never quenched. Where the worm, oh well. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt loses its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourself and be at peace with one another. Um, our devotion writer is Mar Margaret Isaacson, uh, retired, Luck, Wisconsin. And Margaret writes, Jesus often uses exaggeration or hyperbole to get our attention. He does that in verses 42 to 48. If we took all of Jesus' words literally, we would, we would be stumbling around with one hand, one foot, and one eye. Then also add, added is the talk about the millstone. In 1975, as a student in St. Olaf studying in Jerusalem for a season, a group had occasion to see a millstone in action pressing olives, powered by a donkey. A millstone is heavy. What does this passage say to me? Don't put stumbling blocks in the way of people who want to believe in Jesus Christ, either by our words or by our actions. It's okay to be tested, as if being salted by fire, the meaning implying that the right testing can lead to our being the right kind of salty people who live who can live at peace with others. Let us pray. Dear God, help us to reach out in love with the gospel to those around us, enabling them to want to have Jesus in their lives. Amen. Well, it is continuing to wake up and do morning uh, devotions is a commitment I made, and I'm glad to be here. I'm sorry that the middle section fell apart. Um, it turned out yesterday, I already read it, 
So I didn't pay too much attention. I just click open and try and cold read um, so that I'm um, getting it before you do so that I don't do those little comments that you heard me make. Uh, so be a blessing today. Continue to reach out and pray for the people of um, Florida that uh, everything will go well for them. Be a blessing. Amen.